When creating a shot into another world, the cinematography, lighting and framing is the portal into that world. And something magical happens when astonishing art is supported and made possible by incredible technology. Welcome to part two of our three-part series where we dive into some of the techniques and technology the demo team used during the production of the real-time demo, Enemies. This second part explores how we can use our understanding of cinematography in combination with the powerful tools available in Unity to bring our environment to life. In the first part of the series, we went through some of the techniques and workflows we use in our approach to assets of the environment itself. Now that we have good assets, we can start talking about the components we need to build an effectful shot. Our goal is to use the environment to frame the character, which for us means we need to strike a balance between grandiosity and subtlety. Our character is the main focus, so the environment itself can't demand all the attention. We want the viewer's eye to focus in on what is important, and contrasting light is often one of the most effectful ways of attaining that attention. Our eye is drawn to contrasting values, even in the slightest amounts, and we can use that to our advantage. For our scene, the center of the room is where our character sits, and it's where we want to put all the focus. The idea for the scene is to have the room lit by natural light. So we can start by playing with a simple directional light, to imitate a sun. When moving the sun around, our surrounding structure starts casting shadow shapes on our subject. And when we're working with lighting for our scene, we need to think about it in two different ways. Firstly, we need to think about the lighting in the scene, the type of lighting that defines the mood, the actual atmosphere. Do we have a dark scene only lit by a simple point light or do we have a very illuminated scene flooded by natural light? Secondly, we need to think about the lighting from the camera's perspective. This is where the lighting affects the composition of our shot. As we move our lights around, it highlights areas of the scene and changes how we focus on the shot as a whole. The skill here is to balance the two. We need to establish the right type of lighting in the scene, but we also need to compose the shot to guide the viewer's eye. In enemies, the scene literally transforms, and with it, the type of lighting and the whole feeling of the environment changes with it. As the scene progresses and the room transforms, the type of lighting changes and thereby the mood and composition changes. And we have to maintain the right type of lighting for the mood and scene and keep a clear and readable composition. To help us compose the scene with lighting, we sometimes use additional lights for specific objects, divided into Unity's light layer functionality. Light layers allow us to create specific lights that only affect objects we want them to affect. This feature was especially useful when highlighting the character in the center of the scene. Using well-placed area lights, we can separate the character from the background when needed. And although this lighting isn't technically real, we can use it in a way to make it feel believable, which is much more important when telling stories visually. Placing the lights in a way where the rim or side light could seemingly be coming from the sun makes it seem informed by the scene lighting. And that can be enough for the viewer to make it seem believable. This can be a very powerful tool when you need to art direct the composition and readability of your shots. If we wanted to create a sense of depth in our scene, we could try composing our scene with layers in mind, where each layer fills a role to help our story. A classical layered setup would be composed of a foreground, a midground, and a background. The background is the backdrop, not something we're supposed to pay attention to, but it gives the world depth and sets the scene. Looking out through the tall windows, we can see pavilions and trees, it's not a lot, but it's enough to help us understand what type of setting we're in. Then we have the foreground. The foreground often acts as a gateway or door frame to the scene. Foreground elements can help make the scene feel more dimensional as they give clear size and context to the midground. In most environments, the foreground is the darkest, and the deeper you go into the image, the brighter it gets. This is because the air is filled with particles that scatter the light. And the further you go into the distance, the more layers of particles there are. For enemies, we used a volumetric fog to simulate the atmosphere. This is what actually allows us to see the rays of light shooting through the windows. And while this effect can be subtle, you very much feel how the room is more alive when it is there versus when it is not there. This effect can also be clearly seen in the background environment, as the volumetric lighting is filling up the shadows on the pavilions. Unlike the main indoor environment, the outdoors was only built directly for the camera itself as we got closer to a final version of the cinematography. With this in mind, we also need to pay attention to the framing and readability of our subject. While light can do a lot of the lifting for the composition itself, the albedo, also known as the base color, of the actual assets in the scene can have a great effect on the visual read. 
The character is important for the scene as a whole, and simply changing the background can obscure the subject and make it less visible. Likewise, we can also use the base color to enhance a certain property. When we open the first shot, we are met by two statues guarding the foreground. These statues were specifically chosen because of their dark value, and we can use this to enhance the feeling of a contrasting foreground. Had the statues been a different and brighter color, the contrast wouldn't have been as effective despite having the same shadows and lighting. Our scene is made up of many different components, all adding to its realism and immersion, but usually none are more impactful than lighting. In the real world, light bounces around, and as it does, the light becomes softer and more diffuse. This effect greatly adds to the believability of our scene, especially when working with a realistic setting. There are a couple of ways to achieve this effect in Unity, but for enemies, one of the amazing tools we used were the probe volumes. The probe volumes are a smart way of getting great reflected light throughout the scene. The pro volumes act like little points in space, and each point reflects its own light according to the environment it sees. These probes overlap with the environment itself, and instead of calculating its own reflected light, the environment uses the nearby probes to get the lighting. And it results in a completely different atmosphere, everything softens up and quickly moves from digital to realism. But if you have areas in your scene that require more detail, attention, more subtle light shapes, you can partition the probe volumes according to your needs. By allocating a detailed section around the character, we are able to get much more refined bounced lighting around the character's face, which was especially important when dealing with the fine details of creating realistic human likeness. The outdoors don't need the same fidelity as the inside at all. Firstly, they're supposed to appear simpler and not grab too much attention, so any incorrectness or lack of fidelity we might lose will not be noticeable in the final shot. However, for our shot, we don't want the viewer to immediately see our character in the middle. At first, we want the viewer's eyes to glide around in the environment establishing the scene, and then slowly come to rest in the center once they discover the person. A couple of elements help us guide the viewer to the right place, notably the oval nature of the room and the movement of the camera. Because of the symmetry and roundness of the room, our eyes naturally seek towards the middle to find a point of resting. For enemies, it was important that the initial environment felt grand, and through iterations of the interior, we came to a point where the room felt right. At some point, we had to increase the verticality of our scene, and therefore raise the roof significantly. The room itself now felt right, but not in the framing and the composition, so we altered the aspect ratio to accommodate a much more vertical room. This is a good example of how us working in real time can allow us to refine and discover the overall impact of the shot. With the ability to recompose everything, our set is not locked to the camera, and our camera is not locked to the set. Instead, they inform and guide each other to a new level. The camera itself plays a very significant role in enemies. To actually see and feel the scale of our grand pavilion, we can use the camera to enhance that feeling. Placing it low and making the view look upwards gives a feeling of presence and relatable scale, as it relates to how we as humans would experience it ourselves. Then the camera moves down to focus in on the character. This movement also helps us understand where we should put our attention. The camera then continues to move in towards our character, getting closer and closer. Throughout enemies, the camera never cuts and never stops moving. This creates an almost hypnotic feeling, and it helps immerse us into the scene. In traditional film, cuts between shots act as a short break, a moment to see something from a different point of view or to catch your breath. But to help intensify an otherwise seemingly calm scene, never cutting almost makes it more immersive and intensifies it for the viewer. This continuous shot almost mimics how we would experience being in the scene ourselves and the tension builds throughout the film, never letting us breathe until right before the ending where we finally get released. To help us develop a cinematic camera like this in Unity, we're using timelines to structure everything out. For us, the timelines become a dynamic backbone of the demo, as everything from the character's performance, the character movement and effects are held there. Clips on the timeline let us redefine the idea of what a shot is in traditional filmmaking. In Unity, a clip can become a representation of a piece of content like the character's performance, a special effect or the camera. All these elements can be shifted around independently, letting us work with what happens in the scene like on a film set. Having everything in real time like this means that we can do quick iterations on the right sense of flow, speed, and camera angles. And in traditional filmmaking, longer, seamless shots are tricky to carry out, because it can be hard to evaluate everything at once. 
Additionally, the process of synchronization becomes a much simpler process. Timing the actor's performance with the correct VFX and the right camera move becomes a totally different experience. Instead, it becomes a process of experimentation rather than a process of simply executing. But when we work with everything in real time on the timeline, with every component of our scene separated, we have the power to adjust and recapture. With the help of the timeline, the scene becomes a stage for us to experiment with the flow of performance, effects, lighting, and camera angles, so that we can continue to explore new ways of building and telling the story. If you wish to further explore how we create real-time demos like enemies, take a look at part 3 in the series where we explore the creation of the digital human in enemies. For now, we hope that this video was inspiring and insightful. Thanks for watching.